from Matthew 11. At the time Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. All right, thanks, Christina, and good morning, friends. Uh, it's good to have you gathered with us here. Uh, <clears throat> it is January, which means it's New Year's resolution season. Anybody made any New Year's resolutions? Okay, nobody. All right, okay, a couple. we got a couple. Okay, we won't, we won't ask you how you're doing on those, but chances are uh, if you made one, uh, it's still in kind of that sweet spot, right, where you are feeling good about it. Uh, but there's always New Year's detractors, right? Those people who are like, New Year's resolutions don't work. Anybody self-proclaimed New Year's detractor? You're like, I don't, okay, we got a couple. All right, well, we're pretty divided here this morning. Okay, but here's the thing. Uh, whether you made a resolution and you're running after it full steam ahead, uh, whether you are an anti-New Year's resolution person, uh, I was hearing a few people over the past couple weeks Uh, talk about how they weren't going to make any resolutions in the new year, Uh, which isn't that surprising, right? Like, you detractors know what what they're talking about. It doesn't seem like it's worth it. But the reason why I was hearing a lot of people uh, say they didn't want to tackle any resolutions uh, had nothing to do with whether or not they thought they could accomplish a goal. It had nothing to do with whether they thought the whole idea of New Year's resolutions was, was worth it. It was because they said they were too tired that they didn't feel like they had it in them to tackle something new. That the past year and year and a half had been so hard for them that they didn't think that they could even pick up something new at all. They were just making it, just barely surviving. Uh, And and I've been thinking about that since I heard some of those conversations. And and I, I feel a little bit of a burden around that. Uh, Because that whole idea that, like, you're just barely making it, or you're just barely surviving. I think like a lot of people have felt that for like a year and a half or two years now. Right? Like for, for a year and a half or two years, like everything has kind of been uncertain. Everything has kind of been questionable, right? like kind of up in the air. Like uh, I, mean, I, I remember thinking about January, like two months ago, I had all kinds of plans for January. It seemed like January was going to be freedom, right? We weren't going to be wearing masks anymore. It was going to be wonderful, right? And then like the middle of December, all those plans went out the window. And that's like what survival mode feels like. Right? When you're in survival mode, you're just kind of living like day to day, week to week, month to month. You can't really plan out into the future. Right? When things are so uncertain, when things are so up in the air, you have to kind of just think about the next immediate thing that I have to do. So something like a New Year's resolution or, or goals or tackling something new is really hard to wrap your mind around right? because you don't quite have the energy to do it. And so I've been thinking about this, and I've been thinking about this in two, really two different directions, as I've been thinking and praying about, like, what God wanted to do in us in this coming year, uh, and, and really kind of a feeling of burden in two different directions, right? If, if we're living in kind of this survival mode space where everything is up in the air and everything is kind of uncertain, uh, I think about that for our neighborhood, right? Like, and I think about that for my neighbors, uh, that tackling something new in a world that is so uncertain when I'm living kind of paycheck to paycheck or week to week, tackling something new takes a lot of energy. And so I think about that as we, as a church, are here in the neighborhood trying to invite people to find out who Jesus is right? and trying to invite people to come in and, and experience this community called Wingfoot Church. If people are living in survival mode, taking on something new is incredibly hard. It takes a lot of energy. So like if you're part of our community, you've become part of our community in the past like 18 months, like I'm super impressed with that. Right? Because it takes a lot of energy to step into something new and to make new relationships when you're living kind of day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month. And so, so how do we as a community here in this neighborhood connect with our neighbors who, who know nothing about Jesus when the world is in this kind of survival mode space? 
The other burden that I feel is for our church family. Uh, because, uh, so we're now like uh, a year and a half into this church plant thing called Wingfoot Church, right? Like, and some of you were with us in, in like 2019 and 2020. You remember, you remember what 2019 was like? Man, like I had never worn a mask before in my life. Like 2019, like we were gathered in homes. We were like literally breaking bread together. Like I was just dipping it into the bowl that you were dipping your chips into. Like no thought, like it was beautiful. Like, we were experiencing kind of this community together where we were starting to pray about and dream about and, and plan for what a new church here in Goodyear Heights was going to look like. And so in 2019 and 2020, we started putting together kind of the, the, the plan of what God was calling us into it, and we called it Wingfoot Church. And we said the thing that God was calling us into was to renew hope in the heights in Jesus' name, that we wanted to be this community of renewed hope and renewed love and renewed energy here in this neighborhood. And we started talking about disciple making, like what would it look like to, to see 1% of this neighborhood made new by Jesus? What would it look like to be uh, reproduction-minded, right, where we're, we're reproducing house church communities and, and even like churches around us in communities that need churches? We started dreaming about community development, like how we, how we approach the neighborhood, not, not from a, a mindset of what do they lack, but how is God calling us to be part of the movement here, right? We started to dream these big dreams, and then 2020 happened, right? And then we went all online for just a little period of time, and then, then the summer came back, right? And remember in September, as we approached September 20th, our launch Sunday, everything looked golden, everything looked good, right? We were on the other side of this pandemic, and then launch Sunday happened. And it was great, right? This room was full of people. New people and friends and family came out, and, and there was a lot of energy and enthusiasm, and it was a great Sunday. And then September 27th came, and that was a great Sunday. And October 3rd came, and that was another great Sunday. And the 10th, and the 17th, and the 24th, and the 31st, and then November hit, and we were back online. And, and, and I just, I, I've been thinking about this for our church, like, like, we're now, like, I don't know, maybe like our 89th Sunday as a community, our 89th week together, something like that. The reality is, like, church planting is hard. It's, it's really, it can be really tiring. Like, like, some of you who've been here from the very beginning, when, when, when we were in that beginning stage, everything was about getting to September 20th, right, kind of being a church here in the neighborhood. But, but maybe now it's kind of settling in, like, oh, man, this is actually, like, for the long haul. <laughs> like, the, how, how many weeks do I have to serve in kids' class? Right? Like, how, how, how many times do I have to clean the same bathroom? Right? Like, like, when you're in this church planting community, uh, it's all hands on deck. And, and, and that would be heavy, even if we weren't in a pandemic. Right? And so, like, on the one hand, let's just, like, praise God for what he has done in the middle of the pandemic, that we as a community are here and gathered, and we're seeing people connected to, to the mission that Jesus has given us. But, but on the other hand, here's the thing. You might be really weary. You might be really, really tired. Like, you get that planning center email in your inbox, right, and, and you're just like, mm, I'm not sure I want to accept, right? Like, you might be tired, and, and, and that's okay. That's part of the journey. It's part of the process. And so I, I just, been, as a pastor of this community, I've been just kind of praying and asking God, like, what does he want for us in this coming year? Because January night, the, the first or second Sunday in January is when pastors love to come out on the stage and just, like, give you a bold vision for the new year. But, but I've been thinking about that as our community and as we seek to follow after Jesus and to connect with our neighbors. Like, how do we do that when we're tired? How do we do that when we're so worn out? And so as I've been praying and just kind of asking God, like, man, what are you, what, what are you calling us into? Uh, the verse that Christina just read for us, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, has just continued to rise to the surface in my own head, in my own heart, of like, man, this is something that we need to hear. And we need to hear the invitation of Jesus to find rest for the weary. And so uh, what we're going to do as a community is over the next year, like, Everything that we do is going to hang on this idea uh, of what does it mean to, to find rest in Jesus. Right, so, so for us, if you're part of our church family, right, this is going to be an invitation to, in the midst of all the things that we might be doing for, for, for Jesus, in the name of Jesus, as a church, in the midst of all these things, like, let's not lose sight of the rest that Jesus is offering us. 
And so how do we, how do we root ourselves in him? How do we connect to him? How do we stay with him? And, and it's also an invitation to our neighbors who are so stressed and overwhelmed by all the things, by all the burdens of life, that this is what Jesus is offering them. It's the same thing that we are seeking to find ourselves, rest for the weary. And so we're going to explore the invitation of Jesus here over the next couple weeks. Uh, and then after that, we're going to take a couple weeks and we're going we're to explore the person of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit and, and what does he do in our lives and how is he the secret to finding rest in Jesus? And then we're going to take several weeks and we're going to look at the book of Lamentations, which is a real honest look at when life falls apart. So that's where we're going to go uh, over the next couple months as a community. Uh, But this morning, I want us to look specifically at Jesus' invitation in Matthew chapter 11. So if you have a Bible open in front of you, we're at Matthew chapter 11, uh, Christine read verses 25 uh, through 30. This is actually, uh, as you're opening that up, right, so the the stained glass behind me uh, has a picture of white Jesus, and beneath him says, come unto me. This is where that verse comes from, that that statement comes from. This is the invitation that Jesus has to offer. So I just want you to make that connection in your head that every time you step in here, the invitation is this. So Jesus says in verse 28, he says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now in this first sentence, Jesus both describes and diagnoses why we're so tired. He describes and diagnoses why we're so tired. First, he says, come to me, all you who labor. Uh, That word could be weary, right? Come to me, all you who are weary. Now, weariness is different than tiredness, right? You can be tired from a good workout, uh, and you can recover, right? Drink a protein shake and, and, like, shake it off, right? You can be tired from from chasing your kids around all day, but, but weariness is this deep kind of sustained exhaustion, Right, that every day life beats me down. So he says, if that's how you're feeling, he says, come to me if you're weary. But the second phrase he uses describes why we're weary, the source of our weariness. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and are heavy laden. In other words, who are carrying heavy burdens. Like, we're weary because we're carrying these heavy things on our shoulders. We're carrying these heavy things in life. I want to give you a picture of this. So I want you to imagine that your life is this bag, right? You wake up in the morning, uh, the bag is empty, maybe, right? You wake up in the morning, the bag is empty. Uh, And and then you kind of, maybe you're making your morning coffee or whatever your morning routine is, uh, and and the realities of your day sort of start to flood in, right? The, The plans and the schedules and all the things that are demanding your day. So uh, so when you wake up, right, there's all these things, all these weights that you have to carry. Right? The first one, the one that we're sick of carrying, is COVID. Right? Like, this makes everything harder. Right? Family plans are harder. Right? Going to the grocery store is hard. Right? There's this, this sense of like, man, everything that I do is just, it's just more difficult. And it takes more thinking and planning. Like, like parents, you kind of were maybe up in the air, like, are my, are my kids going to be in class? Or am I going to have to reorient my whole life around this? So we're constantly carrying COVID. So let's put that in my bag. We could talk about the weight of politics. That, like, not only is COVID hard, but then, like, it seems like it's super politicized. And so, uh, so anytime you start talking about masks or vaccines or whatever it is that you're talking about, uh, people have opinions and let me tell you, people have opinions. And it all ties back to, to how you think about the issues or how you think about the parties or how you think about all these deep things. So it seems like in our world, everything is politicized. Because right? like, think about it. Everything is like, accessible. Everything is watched. You can make a statement online and someone sees it. And everything has this political edge to it. And so we're weary. I'm weary of opinions and politics. Right? So I put that in my bag. I'm carrying COVID in my bag, carrying the political opinions of my family in the bag. We could talk less about that. We could talk about housing. Like, if you're a renter, man, rent is expensive. But then if you ever want to buy a house, you have to rent and save money for a house, right? Or or you own a house, and stuff breaks in your house, 
Like, if you live here in Goodyear Heights, like, houses are kind of old, right? So, so you got to think, okay, when do I have to replace the roof? When do I have to fix all these kinds of things? I got a leak in the roof. Like, housing is a huge stressor in our life, right? Whether you rent or whether you own, you got to think about, how am I paying for that? So put that in my bag, which then taps a really big one, which is the stressor of my money. Like, so I, I have to keep a job, right? Which has been hard for some people over the past year and a half. So I got to keep a job to make money to pay the bills for the house that I need to live in. Uh, but, but if I don't have enough money, then I have to decide, am I going to get a different job? Am I going to risk unemployment for a little bit? Am I going to go back to school and get debt? Like, like phew, this is a heavy load. End of the month or however often you do your budget, or you look at the bottom line, you say, man, I don't think I can carry that. We talk about the reality of injustice in our world. Right? Like, like, Politics aside, right, talk about, like, in our world right now, like, with, with all the, the technology that we have, like, violence and oppression around the world is in front of you all the time, right? in the news and, and in your news feed. And so we, we are kind of bearing the weight of seeing all the brokenness in our world. In addition to seeing, because of kind of the communities around us, right, and the, the voices that we're hearing now, like, like there's a lot of injustice that maybe we didn't see for a little while. Maybe we haven't been awake to that now we're starting to wake up to it. And now it's like, wait, so all the stuff that I used to think is maybe I need to rethink that. And the systems that we participated in that maybe are less just than we thought, right? So now, so now i got to think twice about the things that I'm doing and the things that I thought about the issues before, right? So, so I got to put that in my bag. And last, this is certainly not last, but our mental health. And on top of all these things, it's no wonder why we're so anxious. It's no wonder why we're so tired. It's no wonder why we have such anxiety and depression, because we're in this constant barrage of stuff. So I'm constantly having to wake up in the morning and carry this stuff. So, so before I have my morning coffee even done, I put all these things in my bag. On top of the other things, right? Like, I didn't even talk about kids. I didn't even talk about, like, if you've got debt. I didn't even talk about chronic health. It's like, oh, got all these weights in my bag. And so I'm just walking through life with this bag behind me of all the stuff that I'm carrying. And, and let's be honest, that you get to the end of your day, you set the bag down, but you don't stop thinking about the stuff in the bag. It keeps you up at night. Because I've got all this stuff I'm carrying. And so Jesus says, if you're tired of carrying this stuff, if you're worn out from all of these things, come to me and find rest. And look at how he describes the rest in verse 29. He says, you will find rest for your souls. All right, so he is, this isn't like Jesus saying, hey, take a nap with me. That's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about, like, just drink some more caffeine and you'll be good. He's talking about a deep, abiding rest. That all the things that, that stress you out in life, all the things that you're carrying in life, right, you, you, it's not that he just erases those things or those things go away, but that there's a deep, abiding rest that exists within you when you find who he is. Man, that sounds like good news. Right? You're saying that these things don't have to weigh me down anymore. These things don't have to stress me out anymore. How, how do I get that rest? And how do I answer the invitation of Jesus? Look at verse 29. He says this, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. Now, it sounds a little bit contradictory, what Jesus is saying. And let me explain why, right? So, so we are burdened by all the stuff that we're carrying. Right, 40, 50 pounds of stuff every single day. I'm worn out by it. And Jesus then says, take my yoke upon you. Right now, we have to picture what a yoke is to understand what Jesus is talking about. All right? I brought my yoke. Okay. Facebook Marketplace is a magical place. All right? <laughs> This is, so when Jesus says, take my yoke upon you, this is what he's talking about. Right, a yoke is this, it's an agricultural tool, a farmer's tool, right? This is like 40 or 50 pounds. Right, so, so I'm burdened by all of this stuff here. I'm sick of carrying it. It's heavy. Every day I get up, I got to sit under the weight of all this stuff. And now Jesus is saying, take my yoke upon you. That, 
hold on. Jesus, I don't think you understand what's going on. That sounds like actually part of the problem. And, and I think if we were to be honest for a minute, sometimes our Christianity, sometimes the way that we approach following Jesus, rather than help us with the stress of the things that we're dealing with, actually makes it worse. Because right? like, think about it, like, whether you're a Christian or not, you carry a lot of these things. Right? Whether you uh, believe in Jesus or not, like the stress of money, the stress of housing, the stress of, of politics and COVID, like, like that's a universal thing. Like we all carry the stress of those things. But, but when you become a Christian or you connect to a church, uh, what happens? Right? Now, now on Sunday, I, I have to go to church. So I get my kids in the car and I put them in the car and now we cart off to church. And that's, that's a stress in and of itself, right? Now, now I, I get connected to a church, and I, and I join a serve team, and so I'm going to serve on Sunday morning. And, and now I want to, I want to connect to community, so I'm going to go to a Bible study. And, and pretty soon, like, the, the things that we do in the name of following Jesus, on top of all the other things that we're carrying, just become this huge bundle of additional stress and additional stuff that we have to carry. And, and, and so, so your neighbor's looking at you, and they're stressed about things, and you're stressed about things, but they see, oh, so if I go to church, if I connect to uh, following Jesus, that means I have to add a whole bunch of other things to my life. I don't have the capacity for that. I don't have the ability for that. Right? Like sometimes the way we think about Christianity, we think about following Jesus, is it's really just about strategies for how to carry the bag. Like how do you carry the bag? How do you carry the stress of life? Like try this thing, or here's a, here's a tactic, or here's a, here's a way to carry the bag of all the stuff in your life. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. You see, to understand what he's talking about, we have to understand the secret of the yoke. He says, take my yoke upon me and learn from me. He's tapping into something specific. You see, in that day, if you would have heard Jesus talk about this, you would have thought about this. You would have thought about this big, heavy bar over the shoulders of some cattle. Because what a farmer would do is he would attach a plow to the back of this, right? So this loop right here, there'd be a big old uh, hook attached to this, and then there'd be a plow behind it. And that cow would, or that, that uh, farmer would attach two cattle to each side of the two hoops here. Now, if a, if a farmer wanted to teach a new cow how to plow a field, right? Or if he, if he had a cow who was a learner, what he would do is he would attach that young, new, scrawny cow right here, put his head right here in the loop. That cow would, would be connected into the yoke. He would take the yoke upon him. But then what the farmer would do is he would take his strongest, beefiest, most experienced cow and attach him right here on the other side of the yoke. And so what would happen is, is that that beefy, experienced cow would be carrying the bulk of the yoke on his shoulders, as they plowed the field together. But, but the learner cow, that learner cow thinks he's doing it all. And he thinks, man, look at me go. Look at all the, the weight that I'm carrying. Look at all the, the, the field that I'm plowing. But the reality is that all of the weight is carried by the big beefy cow on the right. And that learner cow is simply walking the steps next to that cow. You see, this is the secret of the yoked life. Is that when Jesus says, take my yoke upon me and learn from me. For I am gentle and heavy in heart. He says, get in the yoke with me. And what you will find is that when you are yoked in with Jesus, all right, so you're here, I'm, I'm choosing to, to follow Jesus, to be a disciple of Jesus, to do the things that Jesus calls me to do. Jesus is in the other side of the yoke, and he is, a, he is, a, he is experienced. He is strong. He, just, just look at verse 27. All right, G, Jesus says this, all things have been handed over to me by my Father. All things. Now, what does all things mean? It means all things. Right? All the stuff that, that I carry in my bag, all the stuff that stresses me out, that, that burdens me, that, that overwhelms me, that causes weariness, Jesus has authority over all of those things. And so when I'm yoked in with Jesus, I am connected to the one who has the authority in his hands, who, who can do anything he wants. Right? And all of those things have to answer to him. And so, so being yoked in with Jesus is, is being connected to the one who can do anything and everything. Right, but, the, but look at the second thing that describes Jesus, though. All right, verse 29 says, I am gentle and lowly in heart. Right, so, so think about these two pictures. 
Jesus, who has all authority, is yoked in next to you. Uh, he's carrying the weight of these things. He's carrying the, the burden of these things on his shoulders. But what is his attitude towards you? What is his feelings towards you? Gentleness and kindness. Right? Like, if Jesus is only, uh, like, as strong as can be, and you're over here as the learner, you're yoked in, and you're struggling, you're, you're, you're tripping up, right? You're, you're, you're feeling the burden of these things, and you're not sure that you can take another step. If he's only all strong, he might look over at you and scowl at you and say, why are you struggling? Right? Would, would you just pull it together already? And I think that's sometimes how we think Jesus would act towards us. Right? When, we're, when we're struggling, when we're, when we're in pain, when we're, when we're overwhelmed, we think that Jesus is kind of scowling down at us. But what does Jesus say his heart is towards you? He's gentle towards you. He's humble towards you. Which means that when you struggle, when you stumble, when you're feeling the weight of this stuff, how does he feel about you? He feels kindness towards you. He feels love towards you. And, and he, that kindness and his love compels him to want to carry the burden for you. See, when Jesus says, take my yoke upon me, yoke in with me, he's not looking at you as a burden. He's not looking at you as a problem. He wants to take the burden of all of these things on his shoulders. See, because the reality is we could, we could describe this bag. If I put a label on this bag, we could call this bag sin. And it's not because like the worry or the anxiety of these things are sin, but because the reason why we, we experience the things that we do, the reason why uh, we, we are burdened by the things is because we, uh, we live in a world infected with sin. And sin, first and foremost, was about not trusting the voice of God. It was, not about, was, was about not trusting who he is and, and his goodness and his kindness towards us. And so what do we do? We, we try to take control. I, I don't trust God with my finances, so I try to take control of my finances. I don't trust God with my health, so I try to take control of my health. I don't trust God with these things in my life. And so I try to take control, and that's how we end up carrying the bag. That's how we end up carrying all these things. But what does Jesus do? You see, what Jesus does, he says, take my yoke upon me. He says, I, I, I've come to show you the way. Right? And if we can think about what Jesus does, right? If this bag represents all of our sin and all of our brokenness, he takes that and he attaches it to the yoke. So he's carrying all of these things on his shoulders. Right? But, but he doesn't ask you to carry those things. You see, what he does is as you, if, as you follow Jesus, as you continue to track with who he is and where he is going, what he does is he takes this whole yoke on his shoulders. He takes all of it on his shoulders. He carries that whole bag with all the consequences and all the weight of our sin. He carries it on the yoke up to the cross, stretches his arms out, and dies for it. So with his arms stretched out on the cross, what does he say? His final words, it is finished. It's finished. Means there's nothing more required for you. There's no more work required for you to earn a place with God, to, to, to fix your problems. Jesus has won it all. He has carried your burden to the cross and he has done away with it. You see, this, this is what following Jesus is about. You see, if, if you're new to Christianity or, or you're kind of new to, to following Jesus, it's not about trying to do Christian things. It's not about trying to do the things that Jesus did. It's about getting into the yoke with Jesus and recognizing that he has done everything. That he carries the load for all of these things. And so it's not about trying to read your Bible or trying to go to church or trying to pray or trying to do all these good things. It is about trusting that when Jesus paid the price for my sins, when he carried the burden of all my brokenness, and he said, it is finished, it's finished. Which means I don't have to work anymore for it. And this is why becoming a Christian, this is why it requires what we would call a conversion or, or, or a change or a transformation. Right? Notice Jesus says, take my yoke upon me. There, there's a decision that is required on your part to see and believe in what Jesus has done for you. To see him on the cross with arms stretched out saying, it is finished, and believe that he has won in that moment forgiveness and grace for you. And that's the moment that you take the yoke on. 
And if that's the moment that you say, yes, Jesus, I give you my life. That's what it means to become a Christian. Not to decide to try to do Christian things, but to trust in what Jesus has done. Now, here's the thing, though, is that when you enter into the yoke, right, Jesus is on this side. He's carrying the weight of all of my sin, all of my brokenness. He carries all of the burden for it. I'm over here on this side. I'm now the learner. I'm now the disciple. I'm now the one following after Jesus. As the learner cow, when do I feel the burden of the yoke? When would I feel the burden of the load, the burden of the things that I'm carrying? I would only feel it when I started to push against it, and when I started to push against the yoke. Right? So, so the, the big beefy cow here is going this way. The learner cow says, hey, I actually want to go this way. Right? And, and in that moment, he starts to feel the yoke. In that moment, he starts to feel the weight. In that moment, he starts to, to feel like, oh, this yoke is kind of heavy. Right? This yoke is kind of, oh, I'm not sure that I can do that. You see, the moment that we start trying to take control of things again, right? we, we trust Jesus, but then we say, oh, I'm not sure I can trust you here. I trust Jesus, but I'm not sure I can trust you with this thing. We start, we start to put stuff back in our bag. We start to carry stuff on our own shoulders again. That's the moment that we start to feel the burden. That's the moment that we start to feel the weight. It's when we're pushing against the yoke. But when we're walking in step with Jesus, what will you find? What will you find, right? In verse 30, it says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. The word easy also means good or pleasurable. Right? That you will find that as you, as you are walking in step with Jesus, right, you will find that, that following Jesus brings life. Following Jesus brings goodness. The things that he wants for you in your life. In, on your own, it might feel uncomfortable. It might feel like, I'm not sure that I would choose this, Jesus, but I'm choosing to trust you in this space. You will find that as you follow him, he carries the weight for all of those things. And so following him is good. Following him actually leads to life. Now here's the thing. This stuff doesn't go away. Right? The, the weight of these things doesn't go away. It's not like you trust Jesus and all of a sudden I don't have to worry about my finances. I trust Jesus and all of a sudden I don't have to worry about my health. That's, that's not how this works. But what you're saying is, I know that Jesus has the authority. I, I know that he is in charge. And I know his heart for me is good. And so if I'm struggling, if I'm stumbling, if I'm, if I'm not sure I can continue to follow Jesus in this way, like what am I going to do? I'm not going to continue to push against the yoke. I'm going to look to the one I'm yoked in with and say, Jesus, help me see your authority. Jesus, help me see your strength. Jesus, help me see your gentleness. Help me see your kindness so that I can follow you in this space. He wants to carry your burdens. He wants to carry the things that weigh you down. So Christian, are you looking to him? Are you looking to him in the stresses and the anxieties of your life? So he says, come to me and you will find rest for your souls. Maybe this morning you are pushing against the yoke. You're saying, Jesus, I know this is what you want me to do, but I want to do this over here. Maybe there's, there's a moment where you need to let go of some things and give them back to him. Say, Jesus, I've been pushing against this. I need to follow you. I need to trust you. I need to give this back to you. you see, following Jesus is not about trying to follow Jesus. It's about trusting in who he is. It's about trusting his heart. And his heart for you is gentle and kind. Let me pray for us this morning. Jesus, would you show us the gentleness and kindness of your heart? God, if we're honest, we look at the yoke, we look at the weight of that, we look at the things that we think we have to do to earn your love, to prove ourselves. God, would you show us your goodness? Would you show us what Jesus has done in carrying the burden to the cross and saying that it is finished. God, I know there is weariness in this room. I know there is weariness in myself. God, in all the ways that we have been trying to do things in our own strength, whether it's trying to be Christian in our own strength, whether it's trying to do church in our own strength, whether it's trying to, to love our neighbor in our own strength, whether it's trying to, to, to be good in our own strength, would you show us those things? Would you show us the inability of, uh, that we have to do those things. Would you show us your strength? Would you show us your goodness? We pray these things in the name of Jesus who is kind. Amen.